How are you, MC Ron? Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on, on the podcast. Yo, it's my pleasure, man. It. This is Bridge the Gap. My name is Holden Stefan Roy. And super exciting for me because you may be the first European dude that I've managed to interview properly. Partly because of time slot life, so I held off a little bit. But yeah, I think fundamentally, first person, literally on that side of the ocean that I think we're doing it. Um, not on that side of the ocean, but first in Europe. So definitely first in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's fucking huge for me. It feels so cool because then you get to say things like international and it gets all feisty yeah, in my mind. Yeah, exactly. And it's true. And a big shout out to Travis Bryant for like, hooking me up. Just if you're up. if you're looking at it, Travis, much love. I hope Travis is looking at it, but he'll probably peep it later if he's not here at the lab. Yeah. He's a busy man doing his thing. But shout out Travis for real. He did hit me up and say, yo, set this up. So I did. I was super exciting. Um, but with that, this is the show where we like to talk to interesting people such as yourself and go through the story of your life and uh, kind of document it a bit and get to know you better and kind of understand who you are as a person. Because I know one of your tracks was like, Google me. But, bro, when you Google people, it's not like you're getting the good stuff usually. So that's why we do yeah. this over here. But um, we have, like, a proper opening first question that we like to run through. But in order for it to land properly, you've got to just introduce yourself mad briefly and tell the people where you are from. Okay. Well, my name is MC Ron, and uh, I'm the CEO, the co-founder of Wise Guys Global. That uh, me and my bro, Mr. Loco, aka Loco Smoke, uh, built like it was when was it 2012? And uh, I was born in Sweden in Malmo, so I go back and forth, but my roots are from hu uh, Hungary, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot in Sweden, I'm, I'm in Hungary, I'm, I'm like a ping pong ball, like sometimes I'm here, sometimes I'm there. So, that's real yeah. cool because I'm in Montreal and I ain't never been to Hungary nor Sweden or any of that. So what's real exciting for us is always hearing about people's experiences in other places because like a lot of us ain't traveled and I find a lot of us don't fully get like good anecdotal experiences. But with that, we know that we take in place in Europe for this first question. It's a little bit of a story. And when it lands, you can answer it and kind of go in whatever direction it goes. But uh, it starts with my girlfriend, right? And she's washing the dishes one time. And she's got her phone out and she's playing uh, that Black Eyed Peas song that, I got a feeling, ooh. Yeah, oh, yeah. She's like vibing. <laughs> she's dancing around. She's doing her things. I'm giving her this look like, hold up. When the fuck did this shit become chores music, right? Because, like. That's a song that people be putting on right now when they be washing dishes or they be working out or they be doing some boring crap. But really, run that back 10 years. That's that song that was on in the middle of the night when everybody's drunk and dancing around in circles and yeah, doing whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. And then 10 years goes by. The song doesn't change at all because it's a song. But like our lives evolved so much over that time that like now this song's purpose is gone from being party music to like chores music. And I thought that was like super fascinating because it, like showcases the the evolution of things. And then I thought about our musical journeys and stuff, right? And as artists, so often when people do interview us or talk to us or when we have the conversation of our story, it always seems to start at the same place, this adolescent phase where you start to form your identity, the, yo, I started getting into rap at this point. I started writing at that point. I started at this point. But none of that's really like the beginning of anybody's musical journey, right? Because if you think about a musical yeah. journey, it's going to be like all the way back from like the day you was born. There's a good chance you come out in the hospital and there's even some music putting energies into the air from that very day. With that, like it got me thinking about being young, like at five years old, sitting there in Montreal. My dad's got these gray boxes in the apartment, like the fucking tape deck, the amp, the radio thing, the wires going to all the speakers, yeah, yeah, yeah. playing these Led Zeppelin tapes and things like that in the daytime. At night, it was that EDM club music that was being played from the Montreal clubs. My mom's love songs and fucking disco and musicals, a whole different vibe and shit. But all of yeah. that was like this 
this orgy of sounds that like took place in my world before I had any control over any of the music or any of the TV or really anything I heard. And it all kind of impacted me. So I realized that's where a lot of our musical journeys start. All of that when we're born. And nobody ever talks about it. So I was hoping, MC Ron, you could run us all the way back to being the youngest MC Ron you can remember being. And tell us a little bit about what it sounded like to be you and the vibes of your younger days. Well, my younger days. So, well, if I go back, like, uh, my, I have a big brother. And uh, he was a B-boy back in the days. So... He, he listened to all those old school rappers that was back in the days from Grandmaster Flash to Africa Bombada to like Tom Loke and all these rappers. So if I go back, I heard like that was my first thing that I heard. And of course, my mom, she listened to all kind of love songs back from the 80s. But uh, that was, I think, that was the first thing that really gave me that feeling like crap. Like I heard that da, 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 da. and back, back then I, I, I couldn't talk English. I didn't understand English back then. I learned from, I, I learned from TV, from, from, from movies and, and listening to songs. Uh, that's how I learned to speak English. So I didn't learn like from, from, from the school because I was never in the, in the class. I, I was a troublemaker. I I didn't like to go to class. Instead of that, I was going and, you know, smoking a J and stuff like that. So, <laughs> so like, okay. So when you were growing up in like, in like, fuck Sweden and Hungary, were you like, which, where does you start your life? Is it in Sweden? And you like Sweden, start there? In Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. I was born in Sweden. So that's, that's the point where I started from. And what's it okay? Like, what's it like being a kid in Sweden? Like, what are some of the things y'all do? Cause, I mean, I know it sounds like a goofy question, but man, you gotta understand. It's like I'm wildly curious like that. Yeah, I like, uh, um, like for me and for my bro, uh, like it was it was hard because we grew up without a without a dad and uh, without a father figure. So I was the one that was more troublemaker than than he than him i was the black sheep of the family so uh back then in school like i remember when i was in fifth class yeah in fifth class and there's a school called hermut Stahl, and that's where i went and back then it, it was a lot of junkies like uh like besides the, the the school or around the school in the bushes you can f you could find like uh needles that was like yeah heroin and stuff so even a guy that came into the school and uh, a junkie that came into the school and got od'd on the uh, on the toilet so back then it was a lot of of that things that i saw and the first time i saw somebody chasing the dragon like I don't know. It was a really, I, how do you say, another vi environment. And Mamo, my city, is the worst city in whole Sweden. There is Stockholm and Gothenburg, of course, but Mamo is like, like Chicago, especially now. Now right. it's even more worse than back then, because now you got like 15 years old kids going and popping each other just for like two hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or if he went and sold uh hash to another person and he didn't uh, yeah it, it, it's like a lot of gangs right now there is like from house angels to bandidos to like uh, somalian gangs albanian gangs russian gangs and it's it's like totally fucked up it's and it's just getting worse all the time it's just getting more bad and even the police they can, they be like it's too late we can't do nothing yo it's like not what you expect when you hear that like from sweden yeah because like people you just don't expect yeah. you were just like nah like my, my girlfriend in the comments was like man it must be a good life growing up in sweden and i was like no <laughs> nah, we that's a real not as fun environments 
no 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 not at all and uh yeah so uh so that was like when i was like 15 and yeah it was it was hard because my mom was working and she couldn't buy like nike's sneakers for me and and, and it was like when my classmate came and she, he's like yeah look at my sneakers i bought sneakers for 160 dollars and uh yeah my, or yeah my dad bought it for me so for me it was like damn i want to have those sneakers too i want to have nikes i want to have puma i want to have adidas and i was like what should i do so yeah i got i got into some stuff then i started to slang some hash weed pills ecstasy all kind of stuff uh, except uh, heroin at that time uh and yeah and that, that's how i like that's how i grew up and that's why i have so much the things to say in my rap it's, it's i'm i'm no rick ross uh, a fake rapper or or uh, okay he's a good rapper he really, like, uh, I, I have to give him his credit right like another day he's yeah yeah very he's a good rapper. To listen he's a good to rapper. yeah 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 of course he's a good rapper but still but yeah I'm, I'm i hear no, what you're I'm saying no, with uh, like the because yeah. he just so uh, if in case anyone's wondering he he basically stole the persona of freeway rick ross and impersonated a lot of that lifestyle and then made excellent music and so we all were like yeah it's cool <laughs> but yeah. it's, i get yeah. what you're saying though because i mean if i had grown up in an environment like that and i saw people be living a little bit profiting off of a lifestyle that is not necessarily something they went through i would understand the frustration that comes with it but even hearing all that it's like again you don't really think about that side of life and that part of the world over here so it's like yo say a word i guess like shit can get real no matter where the fuck you are because that's just the way the world works and there is no real fucking perfect system for all the talk you might hear glorifying a place like other sweden's and norway's and all these places yeah yeah um so like at what point though do you start to get like more invested into music and like, is that become, is that always like a passion in your life and through all of this, or is it like a sideline thing? And then it kind of becomes more of a focus. No, it's, it's been always there because like I told you, my big bro was a B-boy. And right, right. first I started in, in, in the school B-boying. Then I went over to graffiti. Then so I went right. over to DJing. So, so you like really all these... ran all the elements. Yeah yeah exactly and then hold up were you uh, like climbing then, on crazy buildings and doing some of that wild shit when you were doing the graffiti not not that wild not that wild not climbing on buildings because i'll be seeing some of these graphs and i'll be like how the fuck did you get there <laughs> yeah i know i know there's some crazy graffiti is like insane but uh yeah and then my teacher was i was in class i think it was in fifth grade and he was like, yeah, so everybody should write a, a poem. Mm. Uh, uh, and I was like, okay. So I wrote the poem, but it was funny as hell. So we were sitting in the back and every, we were laughing as fuck. And uh, then he's like, yo, Ronnie. I'm like, yeah. He's like, come and read your poem. I'm like, in front of the class. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, okay <laughs> so i read the poem and everybody was laughing and they were they were like damn you crazy it was a really funny poem and ever since then i just started to write uh, i don't know it just came out for me i i put back the b-boying the djing the graffiti is the writing the uh, writing you were like doing graffiti and djing in grade five yeah, all of that except be, uh, beatboxing. So you were like 10? Or yeah, is that high? No, it was in the fifth grade. In the fifth grade. That is like, how, how old are you? Okay, when so when you say grade? the fifth grade, it might be like some school system shit. I don't know. In Montreal, when you're in the fifth grade, you're about 10, 11? Yeah, something like that. Because there is like nine grades in, in Sweden back in the days. So I don't know if it's like uh, that. We have now. 11 grades here. We finish at 17. So, I mean, yeah, we we finished at 16. All right, so you're like 
t- t- that age of life, early as fuck, doing all kinds of shit that is really impressive for the age, even if it's 12. <laughs> Still fucking cool. That's what I'm saying. Like, at 12, I may have written a poem or two, but I certainly wasn't out there graphing and b-boying and shit. I was a little bit more playing Super Nintendo. <laughs> Yeah, I did that too. Like video games for me is like number one. I I really love video games, even now. I fucks with video game stills, <laughs> but um, yeah, I love it. But like that's crazy though. So you you at like you you covered all the elements before you're a teenager, and decided you're gonna be a rapper. That's wild. How'd you get DJ gear and stuff? Because your brother they just had it, or like what were you DJing on? Uh, no, no, that that was in the school. So I was the DJ. Like there was like every yeah every year like two in like disco or yeah club shit in the school. So then I started to DJ. There the, the, there was the point where I de- I was DJing and putting some music, mixing some music, doing some little bit trying to do some scratches oh, shut out your school CD. though eh because your school gave yeah, that's, that's, yeah that's actually really cool to hear like when a school can do yeah, something yes. like that yes but the equipment wasn't mine but it, when Experience. it was going down i i can i could use it i could like do the the high school music or yeah party what do you call it yeah, I feel that. So you're basically a rapper then by the time you're like 12 and you decide the rhymes is it because you did a poem in class and the teacher made you spit that shit at the class and you're like, Psh, that's what's up. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So then do you take it like seriously at that point or are you just kind of, you know, writing shit? Not yet. It was maybe like around when I was like 15, 16, I, I hooked up with with a old school rapper from Mamo called uh, Tico. And uh, the group that they had was uh, uh, in Swedish, Syndicate. That is like the syndicate. So uh, then he, he was the first that put me into a, a, to a booth where I could like record tracks. And th- that was the point where I started to like taking it like more seriously. And uh, then it just went on. I I met a lot of people through, through the music, and it's it's really crazy. So were you like performing and stuff back then? Yeah. Or was it? And what was that like? Like, what's the scene like? Because you gotta understand. I mean, I know like mechanically, it's all the same things. People go to shows and doing it, but culturally speaking, bro, it's a completely different universe than where we come from and what yeah. we see. So like, what's the vibe like performing? And what when is this taking place? Like, what year is it? So, damn, I'm not so good at these years, the year numbers. So, but when I was 16, what year could it be? I'm like 30. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like 37 right now. So, right, so that would put it like about 2000 ish, because I'm 30. Yeah, something like that. Oh, no, I'm 34. And when I was 16, it was 2004. So it would have been like 2001-ish. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y'all are doing this then before it got like easy to make music. And you're doing it in Europe, which I don't know if that makes it easier or harder, to be honest. They, they, they have, I have no idea. I just know that the States seems to be easier and everything else seems to be harder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but like um so that's actually pretty crazy to think then so like, is there like a lot of hip-hop going on in sweden before y'all are getting involved in this like i don't really know a lot about the culture there or is it like y'all just kind of saw it how did you even get exposed to it uh, like um yeah when i was rap or when i started rapping there was all uh already like the swedish rappers and like big names like latin kings um they're one of the biggest and uh loop troop um a guy called adl from blackness so it was already popping off from the like 89 it started the the hip-hop scene in sweden yeah 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 so it's already started back then and then it's just was going up, going up, going up. So there was Swedish rappers, there was 
rappers uh, rapping in English and uh, like like Latin Kings, uh, the front rapper, like he's he's one of my best friends uh, called uh, Dog Dog Dogalito. He's he's a half Swedish, half uh, from Venezuela. That's fine. And uh, yeah, yeah, I hooked up with him like. Uh, I think I was like 17, 18. I performed with him in Malmo, in my city. He just called me off, me and my friend. And uh, yeah, ever since then, like we've been like keeping in touch. And and uh, yeah, and then through music, I, I, I like met a lot of people, a lot of old school rappers from Sweden. So for me, I... I didn't have, I was just dreaming like all the time. I, I never knew that the, the, these things will happen to me. Like, like, what the fuck? I'm like, when I think, when I'm looking back, I'm like, shit. Yo, it's pretty cool so, like, to hear about. And like, we're only at the part of your life where you're like, not even an adult yet. And you've already yeah. linked up with top Swedish rappers. Apparently you've covered all the elements and you go on to do even cooler shit so like it's actually a really incredible career my guy like your life is is so far pretty dope like um so basically um what happens then i guess after you know that little phase so you're meeting people you're creating the music you're with the syndicate guys i don't know how to say it in swedish yeah 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 the syndicate uh tico his name was tico he's an argentinian uh dude and uh, then that was the after that I met uh, Mr. Loco, Loco the Smoke. Uh, he, he's now in California, so uh, we we built this Wise Guys Global, where we have Travis Bryant even uh, as a member, like a family member. Uh, so like it was popping off. It was like everything was. I don't know. I, it's like what. When I when I look back, it's everything is like a dream. Like until now, because now the wise guy is global. We are like everywhere. We have Travis in Canada. Uh, we have like people from Compton, from Long Beach, from Finland, from Sweden, from Hungary, Australia, um, Austria. So we are just growing, and now we will have even people from Mexico. So. We're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We we are like um, something to similar like uh, the Wu Tang Clan movement because in the Wu Tang Clan movement they got like yeah in different countries members. So um, so when does yeah, Wise Guys start? It started 2012 in Malmo. All right. So what happens between I guess 2001 and 2012? In 2001. It just went on. Uh, I I met Daga Daga Lito from the Latin Kings and like, do you get to tour other countries and do things like that? No, no, not in other countries. I was only performing like in Sweden, like in Stockholm, uh, all kind of different cities in in Sweden. Uh, I, I I forgot one one big thing. Uh, yeah, so because I'm a Hungarian, so I, in two, yeah, it was, that was in 2012 too. In 2012, I even went to Hungary and I wanted to like, just try to like, get my name out there. And uh, then I met the one of the biggest MCs in Hungary. His name is, yeah, maybe it sounds a little strange, but his name is MC Guz. And he's like a freestyle champion. He won like, I don't know how many freestyle champion in Hungary. He's a, he's a really big legend over uh, in Hungary. And uh, there was the point where I even met DJ Zephyr, rest in peace. He's the one that I dedicated the, the album that I just dropped because uh, without him, like, uh, and without MC Guz, like I had like opportunity to, uh, perform we we have we performed like opening act before onyx beat nuts naughty by nature ex- and uh exhibit in in budapest so for me it's 
say, like I told you, everything is just like fucking dream. That's wild. I mean, just that sentence, I like open for Naughty by Nature in Budapest. Like, that sounds fire. Yeah, that was that was crazy. It was like 5,000 people or something like that. So it was dope. That's why you get to meet them? Yeah, we were even drinking with them the night before. uh, We were drinking uh, alcohol called Palinka. And that that is like, um, I don't know if you heard like Uzo, the Greek Greek Uzo. That is like, yeah, yeah. So they were they were really fucked up. And I remember the next day he was like, yeah, uh, I think it was Vinny. Yeah, he's like, yo, man, I don't know if I can perform. I'm still fucked up, still have a hangover. But he was like, well, I'm still going to do it, so don't worry. So it was really crazy. Yeah, it must be, like, part of the job, though, is to learn how to, like, snap out of it after you've been drinking. <laughs> yeah. You have to. You have to concentrate. And did you meet, like, Exhibit and all the other ones? No, Exhibit, no. I did, I never met him. He was yeah. It was a little bit. He was he wasn't down to earth like um, like Naughty by Nature, and uh, Beat Nuts, and Onyx. Right. But but yeah. But still, opening act for for Exhibit was like, wow. Just crazy. No, I mean. All of it is pretty dope. What's up, Uja Nightshade? Um, all of it's dope, dude. And then, what's Budapest like? Like, it's just one of those cities where I actually would love to go to because it just feels like culturally and historically powerful. Like, I feel like there's just like places yeah, that ooze with history. <laughs> yeah, and Hungary has a big history. Like, it goes way back. And it's Budapest is like. It's really beautiful. Not even just the whole country, the whole country. It's amazing. It's like really beautiful. It's like, I don't know, like all these celebrities like Will Smith and all these people that has has been here in Hungary, uh, they'd be like, wow. And they really love it. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, So... Basically, in 2012, you go to Hungary. Uh, oh, yeah. And then at the same time that you do that, or in the same year, you also start the Wise Guys Global Movement, of which, I'll be honest, Travis brings it up, and I don't fully know what it is, because it's not like I heard a lot about it. I understand that it's dope, and he drops a lot of creds about why it's dope, but it's not always explanatory into the culture exactly what it is. So I was hoping you could break it down a little bit for us because it really is impressive and it is cool. Not to say Travis does a bad job. It's just if you could explain it to the world, that would be wonderful. Uh, so so it's a it's a movement and where we are like, um, like how, how do you say, prom- promoting each other but, but re- representing the family and we like do all kind of collabs together and not even together and we have like a big resume like we have like um though fresh to dawn from kentucky he, he made a track with rick ross and uh yeah mr loco uh, loco smoke he, he made tracks with like people from outlaws um even ice t he made a official remix for ice t that ice t said that it's okay, you can do it. And uh, yeah, we are like, how do you say, like a big family that support each other. And we're just trying to like get out there to even more countries and spread like this fucking virus. Yeah, fucks with that. That's really cool. So y'all started this back in 2012 and you said you met Mr. Loco up in your city and he was out there with you and you guys started it there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we started there, and uh, because he uh, he was a kid when he moved from California, because his mother passed away, and his dad is uh, like a Norwegian guy, so 
then he lived in Sweden. That, that, there was where I met him in Sweden, and now he's back in California again. And uh, so you guys started the Wise Guys movement together, and how you know how do you how does it like manifest? You guys do like have you ever been to LA and done shows with him? Is that like how it kind of plays out a little bit? Uh, I've never been doing shows like I told you before in the states, right, right. but uh, I I've been in LA, I've been in San Francisco in the Bay with him and uh sacramento um oakland yeah some of these it's actually still just cool to go to la i'm not even gonna lie i've never been to la before yeah Yeah. that's really dope um so where have you performed in other places than sweden or is it just sweden you performed in have you gone around europe a bit um only in sweden and and the whole hungary uh and uh and I had one performance in Poland, so that is the only places that I've performed, on, uh, yeah, for now. But I have an upcoming show in, in Germany in Berlin. Berlin. Say where? We will see. Yeah, we will see what's will happen with this fucking situation, or with this situation. Oh, you can swear if you want. I don't mind. Yeah, it's just coming, you know. No, it's okay. I mean, I mean, you're allowed to swear is all I'm saying. You can say fuck if you want. It's okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, the situation is wild. I don't know, man. Like, uh, yo, are you allowed to perform in, uh, in, uh, Hungary right now? Like, is there, like, how's the COVID situation? Yeah. It's... Right now in, in the Hungarian scene is a little bit like, like the underground hip hop doesn't it's it's coming up right now because the mainstream took over and it's the same in sweden the mainstream the mainstream took over you know the trap and all all kind of these what do you call rap and uh but now it started to bubble even in sweden the old school rap is coming back the old school hip hop and even the same in hungary so there's things that will pop off soon and it will come back so yeah it it will come as soon as possible but still we'll see what will happen of this situation in the world yeah um i feel like it's going in that direction of things are gonna just bubble underground like i went to a thing yesterday and like it was a private party i'm like i hope this shit keeps happening it was pretty fire um yeah. i don't know if the if, if the cops had shown up they might not have been thrilled but it was a good fucking time and i was like say a word and like people are so thirsty to like go to things like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was almost like everybody in that room's like you know first night out in six months type thing and i was like yo this is like an energy where I think every fucking live scene is about to have this little boost like it hasn't had in a minute because like yeah. the situation the situation has lowered people's standards <laughs> in a lot yeah. of ways. Like I think yeah, people are gonna exactly. be willing to pay more for less to actually just be in a room with people. And yeah. that's like really freaking great for um underground art. But when it comes down to like you know, your sound and whatnot, who are some of the, like, things that inspire you? Like, is there, like, a heavy Swedish thing? Because I feel like you got that, like, underground, West Coast almost feel to your shot. Yeah, it's, I got a, like, I, I was influenced by by Swedish rappers um, and even from the States, like, from Pac to Ice Cube, Gucci Rap, Capone and Noriega. So it's been both sides, like the East Coast, the West Coast. But first, when it started, it was, yeah, it was just the West Coast. But then I started to, like, getting into East Coast. And I was like, whoa, East Coast is dope, too. So I I, I listened to both sides. Right. What do you think about the South? There is some rappers that I like, like Scarface. 
Ghetto Boys, um, Bun B, Pimp C, uh, Free Six Mafia. So, yeah, oh yeah, and T.I. <laughs> Are you excited for the verses from Three Six Mafia and Bone Thugs? Yeah, I am. And Bone Thugs is one of my favorite. That's fair. I'm excited for that too. I'm on Team Bone Thugs, I'm not gonna lie. It's just kind of what it is. Um, so, yo, you dropped your album and whatnot. I mean, I don't know how many albums you had. Have you always been MC Ron? Or is MC Ron like a current yeah. name? No, it's always been MC Ron. And I dropped like two albums. albums, And before that, we were dropping mixtapes. All kind of mixtapes. We were on mixtapes. Even on... Uh, there was this uh, compilation album that we made with... There was a track with me and Loco and uh, uh, DJ King Assassin. That's like, he's a former producer for Tupac. And uh, we, we made a track and on this compilation, there was uh, like rappers like The Game, Yuck Mouth. So to get us, so we got on this compilation and it was like, oh, holy shit. It was like big names already then. So uh, yeah, and ever since then, uh, Loco is still keeping in touch with uh, DJ King Assassin. It's a yeah, old old school legend too. Nah, that's fire. I mean, I could imagine just working with Tupac alone as an experience where, yeah, you know, not a lot of people did that. You know, just in history, yeah, facts. Yeah. Like it just. Only the people that did got the chance to do that, and that's the end of it. And that's like a wild thing to even be connected to it, or to—I don't know—I'm into that kind yeah. of thing. And to get on a mixtape like that, I mean, Travis told me a bit about that, and it's pretty significant, you know. Like, if I'm not mistaken, it's not like how people be getting on mixtapes today. It was more like back in the day, you, you actually had to be dope to get on that one. Yeah, yeah. So that was like a really good experience too so it was crazy um so tell us a bit about your album that just came out which i've definitely listened to it but it's better if you tell people a little bit about it uh, so the whole album is like dedicated to my best friend dj zephyr he, he's the dj that like hooked me up with all kind of yeah the opening acts that i told you before and when he died, it was, yeah, it was really hard. So I even put down the music for like two years or three years, something like that. And then from nowhere, I just got a glow. I just started to write. And, and then I came back and I felt like, I don't know if people believe in these kind of things, but the whole time when I was working on this album, it felt like he was with, with me. So it, even now he's with me, I can guarantee. Because we we was he, he was like my big bro and he saw me like his little bro. So for me um, to do this album, it was like ripping my heart out and putting all the energy, all the things that I could put for my soul because I really wanted to make this uh, album for him. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a whole different story for me. And uh, the album, um, yeah, I got some featurings like Travis Bryant, Mr. Loco, Go Fresh to Dawn, yeah, from the Wise Guys, and uh, even some rappers from Hungary. And even the Swedish old school legend, Daga Daga Lito from the Latin Kings and uh, Master Ace from from the States and Demrick. So, sorry, that's, that's my dog. That's okay, man. That's awesome. Dog cameos are always the best. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I think this album was like pretty dope and uh, I'm really happy to put 
putting putting it out, especially because I dedicated to him to Zephyr. So he'd be listening to it from up from up above. <laughs> so there's really a much emotional things in it because like I told you before, the whole album is dedicated to him. So it really means a lot to me. So I, I appreciate that. I, I liked it. I mean, I'll listen to it and I'm like, yo, for anybody that really likes that old school flair, I'm like, yo, you really got that energy down to a fucking team. And it was really cool. And I really liked the language flip ups. I was like, the first time I came through, I was like, say a word. That's not English. <laughs> and it was really yeah. fun. And I feel like it adds some life into it. I've had some perspective at how, like, okay, like, bilingual is not that cool to most of the world. Is a big epiphany I've had recently because of where I live and some other local stuff. And I'm like, oh, I like that a lot when I hear these languages coming in. Yeah, and th th that was the, um, I think, the track, like, uh, called Fantastic Four, there where I have MC Guz, the freestyle champion, and even another legend called Busha Pista, and uh, MC Kamen, Kamon, uh, they are from a crew, uh, both of them, like Kamon and Busha Pista, called Ivory Mafia, and uh, they are really big uh, in Hungary. So for me to have them too, on the, on the album, it was like a really, good thing and i really appreciate it to have them that's dope so is there like a big freestyle scene in like this world like battles and all of this stuff like were you ingratiated into that culture at all or were you more on like just the songwriting side i was more into the songwriting but but i i, I never battled so like battled all, uh, other rappers before but if there was like a, a performance and of course I dropped freestyle or something like that, but uh, not like, I'm not a officially battle MC or a, yeah, I'm an MC, a rapper, but uh, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can freestyle, but I'm not that freestyler. Is there a lot of um, the battle culture out there? What's up, Lamef? Like, is that, like, a big thing out by there, or is it more people focus on the songs and whatnot? Like, what's, like, the, the bigger vibe? Back in the days, for, like, 10 years ago, it was big. But now it's more like songwriting or, yeah, lyrics. And it's, like, do people fuck with, like, you know, the internet and social media a lot more? Like, is people being, like, TikTok stars and all that kind of shit? Yeah, there is some people that do do the uh, does those TikTok things and but I don't know I'm not so into it I'm mm. too old I felt like that at first and then Travis Bryant showed up because <laughs> believe it or not because me and Travis be working on some stuff so he's all into like we're looking at promo right like how do you get maximum promo with minimum money ultimately and then it was like, oh, say word, TikTok has things you can do. Like, I realized with TikTok, you can, like, throw up a green screen and yell at a camera for a minute. And that's a video. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's a good thing, like, to do promotion. Uh, to, like, be on all kinds of social media places. So on, on that way, yeah, you need to use like everything. You need to, I have TikTok, but I don't know. I'm not so good at it. I'm, yeah, I hear you. I'm trying. It was a long time I uploaded something there, but. No, yeah. I'm, I'm with you though. I barely do it because I hate the editing and I hate thinking about TikTok videos. And it was wild to me to try to capture something and put it into 60 seconds and communicate shit when it takes me like a lot of words to say anything <laughs> and then it's yeah like... i know but i don't know it feels like an unavoidable thing to learn how to or at least find somebody in my life that knows how to do it my dream is that somebody shows up and they film me 
and turn it into TikToks. And I just don't have to do anything. I'm sure that naturally yeah. people can film me and make TikToks out of me. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> that's super dope. So what other kinds of stuff do you do with your world at this point? Like what else is happening in the world of MC Ron? I'm just right now I'm working all ki- I'm working on all kind of projects. Um, I just jumped into a rock band. They Say need a rapper. Word. Yeah, yeah. So I'm doing all kind of stuff. Like um, I'm trying to capture all the audience, all different type of audience, you know, and even like. There is a producer uh, in Slo- Slovakia that makes these, um, how do you call, these club beats or instrumentals, yeah, right. it's club music. Yeah, so I'm trying to dig in everywhere so I can like, yeah, to get even more bigger. So uh, I'm trying to do all kind of music right now and uh, jump into all kind of projects. So, but still, my heart is always beating for the hip hop, so I will do hip hop. I will do rock. I will do. I think I that's really shit. fucking like, cool that you're willing to be versatile with it. I almost think like that's what you almost have to do a little bit. Like, yeah. If I learn anything from Pulse Malone and these dudes, it isn't so much that like like we put the label of hip hop on that dude, but when you listen to him talk, they're like, I want to be a rock star and shit like that and you're like oh say word these guys don't see it like the same way that i see it and it feels like when i talk to because like i do this with sometimes young people and they'd be like hold up sir you gotta understand i'm gonna drop a rock song this time and then i'm gonna drop an edm song and then i'm gonna drop a fucking this song and they're never gonna know what's gonna come next and love it or hate it they're gonna click on the next one and i'm listening to these kids break it down them and there's like 17 to 20 year olds dude and i'm going that makes so much more sense in this era like that's actually like what and so like people get caught off guard if you're able to be like versatile like that so it's like dope to hear um but like when you record and stuff do you like record at home do you get like studios like how's the vibe out there um i record at home or at my uh i have uh, yeah, a friend called uh, Jizo, and uh, yeah, he, he got a record label, and the, the, that was where I recorded my the last album. So, but usually now I record at home. Sometimes I will go over to him, I record. He does the mix and mastering. He made all the mix and mastering on the whole uh, album that I just dropped, and. Uh, yeah, he's in like in. He's a big name in in Hungary, so he makes a lot of stuff for all kind of artists, he, even not for rap or hip hop, even like singers and yeah, whatever. But he does a great job. That's cool. Um, so what kind of games are you playing these days? GTA, Battlefield, Call of Duty, um, FIFA, NBA. I even played God of War, but right now it's on a pause. Um, Oh yeah, Mortal Kombat, because it's been there since I was a kid, so I love it. Yeah, you ever stream any of that to Twitch? I have a Twitch account. I, I do, but I haven't like streamed for I think it's maybe like one year or something. So I haven't streamed for a uh, for a long time. But I will start with it again because uh, I got some fans uh, even from streaming, like when I was playing. So. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have like a, a lot of followers there, but um, yeah, you, you need to build it up like everything else in in life. That's true. But, but I like it. I like it. 
I just figure like, I don't know. I don't know if I like playing video games on stream because it's a whole different vibe than this. This I understand on stream. Playing video games feels kind of weird. It feels weird like when you want to sit there and like goof off and like not play or like your shit. Like I tried to like play one of them games that required skill and I fucking sucked yeah. for an hour straight. And that was the day I was like, I don't know if I want to be a video game streamer. I don't because you know, you get mad and shit like when you can't beat a part. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to go through that. All yo, it looks so stressing to be like a video game streamer to be honest. But if that's what y'all do for fun, yeah. it's like I like watching that shit because I it's less yeah. stressing to watch it. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to watch too. Um. Yeah. Yeah, um, so that's fair. So people can catch you, hopefully, in the near future on Twitch. And then once the world opens up a bit, you're going to be working on setting up the tours to the different countries and different places. I hope so, too, bro. And uh, when you when you, when you you want to, you're welcome in Sweden or Hungary, whenever. You and your girlfriend, so, be so you know. I'll, I'll be your guide. I'll be your guide. <laughs> I fucks with that stills. I like having guides. It makes the whole uh, trip better. We just went to New York City and had a guide, and it was like, oh, say where? This is probably a cooler trip than the version with no guide where you're on your yeah. own with Google and you're, like, waste an hour on traveling. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I have a cousin in, in, uh, in Brooklyn, so I remember when I was there for, for the first time, and yeah, she she's a real smoker. And I love her. She's she's a really cool uh, girl. Like she's mad crazy, but real similar. It, it's it's in the family because yeah, she's been into doing to like doing business like I did back in the days. I don't do do that anymore right now because when I met my girlfriend, I like down everything so now i'm legal i don't do bad stuff i'm trying to like only concentrate on the music and on my life or on our life right yeah which it's good for travel yeah yeah i mean i would love to go out there i mean that's like my new plan is to like figure out a way to make money off of travel so if I gotta film shit, like we filmed me eating pizza, we're gonna make. Um, <laughs> inevitably, I'm gonna get to like editing it and make a really shitty I eat pizza in New York City video. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> but if you do crap like that, right? Now it's all a business trip in the eyes of the accountant, and that yeah, changes only, everything. Of course, the only thing I, I I missed in in on the East Coast, like in in Brooklyn was taco bell i don't know if you heard about that we got ta- we got it here but i don't think it's like okay like when it's here it doesn't taste like what it tastes like there so uh, i've had like over there yeah i had quebec taco bell i never had american yeah. taco bell oh man oh, it's delicious and uh do you have dunkin donuts over there yeah i worked at a dunkin donuts for three months oh shit <laughs> yeah, I swear. I did the overnight. And I fucking swear, where I, there was at least one dude that was a wise guy that came in and he one time offered me a job to go be a doorman at a fucking bar. And in hindsight, what? if I had actually taken that as proposition, maybe my life went in a different direction. But that fucking straight up happened at like four in the morning when I'm working at the fucking donut shop. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, bro, it was weird. Crazy. When you do the overnight... It's like you see what the, for lack of a better term, crackhead economy looks like because there's not a lot of spots open overnight and you find out that that one does computer repair and that one's the cigarette smuggler and that one does this and like they literally built an entire ecosystem under yeah. society. And I was like, that's yeah, 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 yeah. fucking wild. But I didn't know any of that. So I worked at a Dunkin' Donuts for three months overnight and because they sit there and wow. they just talk and they gossip and they drink their coffee so they can stay in the store. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. 
I'm sure it's the same thing though. There, there, I saw it in the states. I don't think we had Dunkin' Donuts coffee like one time when I was in New York, but like it's coffee, so I mean I don't really fucking yeah, compare it. Coffee, yeah. But I wasn't that like excited to eat a donut there because I worked there, so it's like donuts is donuts. I was for me, it was like pizza was cool. The chopped cheese thing was ridiculously delicious. Um, and then we would have tasted that before. It's like a hamburger souvlaki. Okay. It's like basically a hamburger and cheese and like 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 a fucking burger, but like it somehow comes out like a melted grilled souvlaki delicious mess of heart attack, and it's wonderful. Yeah, sounds good. Yo, it is. Um, that was one of the highlights, and then it was because then we also had a bunch of Puerto Rican uh stuff because my man's is all from there, so like he like fed us some local shit and all sorts of other stuff, yeah. and it was like fucking like a coochie fritos. And it was like super delicious shit. And uh I mean like I was excited. And the pizza bro, it was actually fire. Like it lived up to the hype. Cause the crust is like this airy, like like my crust is like thick and feels like bread. Their crust feels like cake dough fucking qual like a pay- like I don't know how to describe it. It's like I don't know how you make crust like that, but it makes you want to eat more pizza. <laughs> yeah. Anyway food's fucking fire but well, yo what are some like shits let's say we go to sweden and hungary and people want to be eating good food what is the things you're supposed to eat like in sweden it's like arabic food um kebab and falafel and yeah and swedish or yeah pizza that's it's a whole different taste in the whole different way they they make it like like in, in the states it's it's really good it's like mamo has the best uh pizza and uh all this stuff when you go to stockholm oh man it it, it ain't so good like it is in mamo and hungary they got like i don't know if you heard about soups like goulash soup yeah 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 so that is the most one of the biggest things in, in Hungary. And uh, there is this uh, called uh, langos. It's made out of like, it's, uh, yeah, it's almost like a, it's like a Hungarian pizza, but without um, tomato sauce. So it's like covered with cheese and uh, it's just, really awesome it's really good um usually the words covered in cheese excite me yeah trust me trust me you will love it (laughs) nah super dope um that's that's awesome man i mean i know you said you had about an hour for this so i know we're coming up to that point and i i definitely just wanted to say that i appreciate uh your time man and that you share with that like it's really exciting for me to just like talk to people that are in different places and see their vibes and you know hear about the way that other places operate and just like you know i don't know that many people in sweden and hungary (laughs) it's like fucking cool (laughs) to me you know like i'm from canada so much as it's like in north america it's definitely not the states to come from canada so all this shit's mad exciting so thank you for for coming through and i like i fuck with your music Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, we can do it another time. It's like we can continue if you want to. Absolutely, man. Yeah, so I really appreciate it. And um, can I give some shout outs to some people if it's I okay? always give shout outs to people. All right. Okay, so a big shout out to the whole Wise Guys Global, to A2K, to Mr. Loco, Travis Bryant. Go Fresh to Dawn and all the members, MC Guz, Busha Pista, and all all the people that I know. And a big shout out to my girlfriend that I, that I love so much. And a big shout out to my mom. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. That's super sweet, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, and shout out to you for doing your thing. Because you know what, man? Not everybody stays doing it for 20 years. 20 plus years you know that's a huge accomplishment and the fact that you're still doing it 
that's like that's impressive that inspires me right um thank y'all who watch this because to me the fact that y'all are here like the fact that i learned that there are cheese in tubes like that's a wild idea and i think we need cheese tubes in fucking quebec is all i'm saying um like you know it's cool to watch the comments come in while we're talking so it kind of makes it more like a show um so y'all are fucking dope and i appreciate you for you in the future watching this on youtube or spotify or where the fuck you hear it shout out you for that part listening and like comment subscribe all that your links and stuff are in the description so make sure you follow mc ron and do all the cool stuff and all of that good things and yeah it was super cool to have you here man do you have any last words yeah. for the fine folk out there i don't know like keep doing your thing and much love to like everybody that uh, that watched this podcast and uh the world ain't over yet so thanks man in fact all it's, fighting it's just coming back my guy is how i feel yeah but yo appreciate all of you again and live long and prosper everybody Thank you.